Hello YouTube, Sentinel H back again for episode 9 of my Road to Craft tutorial series. As promised, today we'll be talking about the boring machine. So the boring machine is probably the simplest, well the easiest, um, or perhaps the first my automatic mining machine that you'll probably end up using. Uh, it uses not a terrible amount of power, um, although it can be a bit slow unless you can give it a lot of power. It will um, mine for you and it will eject the blocks that it mines out the back of the machine so you can collect it. Um, yeah, so to make the boring machine you need uh, three steel ingots, three base panels, a circuit board, a 2x gear unit, and a drill. So it's pretty it's pretty easy to make, it's not too expensive. Uh, just some redstone, some electrum or an ender pearl for the circuit boards. And otherwise it just takes steel um, to make the boring machine. Now the boring machine is a bit interesting and it's a bit finicky. Um, it has some... you gotta be aware of of its power requirements and how to calculate its power requirements. So if we go into the handbook, uh, we go into the production tab, that's where it is, boring machine. So to summarize what this is saying, the boring machine requires 640 watts of power per hardness point of the blocks in front of it. So every block has a hardness value. Um, so easier to break blocks have lower hardness values. But dirt, sand, gravel don't have very much hardness. Stone doesn't have very much hardness, I would imagine. I don't know how to check those values, um, but every block has a hardness point. Probably diamond and obsidian probably has a ridiculously high hardness value. Um, can't it cannot break bre uh, bedrock? Just so you know. Um, so it takes 640 watts per hardness point, and it also requires an amount of torque to cut through harder materials up to 512. Um, so, so what you do is, I go if you're digging through, if you only expect to dig through dirt with the boring machine, where you placed it, you don't have to give it as much torque or. Uh, in order to dig through it as if you were underground digging through stone and digging through ores. Um, but you'll never need more than 512 newton meters of torque to cut through a block. So if you give it that much, you'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll know that you'll at least be able to get through it um, uh, as long as you have enough overall power because the boring machine <coughs> excuse me, the boring machine um, its speed of operation is determined by the speed that you put into it. So, uh, and it takes quite a bit of speed to get it going fast. Otherwise, it's kind of slow. Um, and you can customize the shape of the tunnel, uh, and we'll, I'll show you that when I show you the GUI. Um, the roof won't collapse; it replaces sand and gravel with stone, I guess, or something. Um, and what this is saying at the bottom here is, if you have Twilight Forest installed. Um, the, bo the boring machine is capable of digging through the walls of the um, of the maze, the Minotaur maze in the, the Twilight Forest. I guess the Twilight Forest maze uses fake bedrock to um, protect it from being mined, but the boring machine can go through it uh, if you give it enough torque. It doesn't say what that torque value is. It doesn't say the required power or torque because it, you know it varies a lot. Power goes in the back, uh, and now we'll, we'll take a look at it. So. Um, what I've, uh, what, what you would need to do then, if you wanted to be sure to get through anything, is to give it 512 newton meters of torque. So the performance engine does a pretty good job uh, when you have it, uh, when you give it an additive, so its power jumps up to a quarter million <coughs> kilowatts. Um, once you, I, I, this is a two to one gearbox uh, to get it up to 512 of torque, and then you're at 512 radians per second, which is not very quick. Uh, if I place the boring machine here. It'll tell you that with uh, 512 radians at 512 torque, it's going to take 17, about 18 seconds. Uh, and what that 18 seconds is, it's, that means 18 seconds to mine forward uh, one more cross section. Um, so I don't think it matters how many blocks it's going to mine when it moves forward. It's going to take 18 seconds to move forward. You have to give it more speed if you want to speed it up. So I could hook this up to the uh, hydrokinetic engine, but um, even at full power, taking in the half megawatt, which is double this power, um, unless I gear it up to have high speed, it's not going to go any faster. So it doesn't matter how high torque is over 512, it's not going to go faster with torque. It takes speed 
uh, to make it go faster. So the boring machine, the GUI looks like this. Two buttons, and you can turn, uh, and there's a bunch of buttons here. So first of all, you can turn drops on or off. If you turn drops off, it will destroy the blocks in front of it, and it won't drop anything. So if you don't care about collecting what, it, what the boring machine is tunneling through, like if it's tunneling through dirt and stone, and you don't need to collect that, you can turn drops off. Um, but if you're using it to automatically mine down below, or you might get some useful materials out of it, uh, you're going to want to make sure drops is on. Um, there's also this reset position button, which I haven't used, but I imagine what this does is, is pull the mining piles back, and you'll see what that means when we take a look at it. So this is the setup GUI for the boring machine, and this block here, no, click the button, represents, let me just uh, stop that for a sec. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. This block down here represents the block directly in front of the boring machine. So the boring machine needs to be placed uh, at the bottom of the shaft. Um, so the boring machine itself will dig out the one block above the floor uh, of the shaft. So this area down here is going to be end up being the floor of the tunnel. So this is the first block uh, below. You know, this is your feet. Uh, when you're walking, this is your head when you're walking, and this is all blocks above it. So the blocks that you click are the blocks that it will um, mine. So you can set up a tunnel that's up to seven blocks wide and five blocks tall. Uh, you can make it a perfect square, or you can actually make a rounded tunnel with this, which I quite like to do. Um, I think it's, it's pretty cool that you can do that. Um, so like you could hit these buttons, and if I click this, now it's going to create... Uh, it's a bit of a, a glitch here. I, I screwed it up earlier when I messed with it. But anyway, we're going to take this down into this chasm over here, and we're going to talk about it. So that's the boring machine. Um, now you're going to want to see it in action, and I'll explain what it, uh, how it works, what it does. He said something. Um, so let's go over here, and we'll uh, we'll place our boring machine um, probably um, right here. So uh, this is where you have to put the power, and this is the business end of the boring machine. Now you're going to want to put the, the uh, boring machine with a block of space between it and whatever you're going to start mining into. Um, because if you noticed earlier what happened, and let me place an industrial coil. I'm going to give this uh, thing some power here. Dynamo well, we're going to place a um, dynamometer there, and then a industrial coil, um, which is just a creative uh, mode source of uh, power for this little demonstration, although you can get these in game, but this is a creative version. Um, so let's rotate this, accidentally hit it, come on, takes a while to turn the boring machine, okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, when the boring machine turns on, it will create a bunch of mining piles directly in front of it, um, the full size of the GUI. Uh, regardless of what buttons you press. So if you place this right up against the wall you want to mine in, it's first going to create a big square hole, then start mining the, uh, the, uh, then start mining, which you might not want. So, uh, if you don't want that, place it a block, give it a block of space. Um, because I think whatever it destroys what, like that, it disappears. Actually, no, it might actually, it might drop, but, you know, if you don't want that, place it a block away. Um, so for power, we want to give it a uh, 512 of uh, Newton meters of torque, and then we want to give it whatever speed we want. So um, let's uh, let's give it uh, 1024, which is the uh, amount of power that that. Um, or was it 512? I don't know. It was either 512 or, or 10, yeah, it was 512 that the uh, performance engine was giving it. So we're gonna give it twice as much speed. We're gonna turn it on. Oh, and I have to rotate this. Why did this turn? It's weird. Let's turn this back. I have no idea why that rotated. Shouldn't have. Okay. Why is it turning when I hit this lever? That does not seem like it should be doing that. Everything is turning when I hit the lever. Very strange. Come on, boring machine. What's going on? Okay, guys, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I did not expect anything like this to happen. Why does it keep turning? What? Come on, boring machine, what the heck are you doing? I was experimenting with this earlier. 
Let's place it on the floor. And hopefully that will solve the issue. Sorry about this. I had no reason to believe that that was going to happen. So let's place our industrial coil and we'll turn it, put a lever down. 512 newton meters, 1024 radians per second, turn it on. All right, so we're giving it half a megawatt. This is the amount of power that you'd be getting from a hydrokinetic engine uh, geared to 512, and we're gearing it to 512 newton meters of torque. Now, obviously, if you took a hydrokinetic engine and you geared it to 512 newton meters um, down from 16,000, you could get to this. No problem. So let me select my uh, preferred shape of tunnel, and you do get the initial um, cuts. So when you select the, the thing, you get this mining frame. This is the full 7x5 uh, mining frame. And then it, these little mining pipes will start to come out in the shape that you select. And uh, blocks that they encounter get broken, and then the uh, blocks get spit out of the machine. So we got enough power right now to get it to about 16 seconds um, per operation. So the, mi the, the tunnel bore is pretty darn slow, unless you give it a whole lot of power. Um, it does spit all the blocks out, um, so it's quite nice. Oh wait, did it actually give me that silver? No, the silver's over here. So, so I got some silver ore here, so in a second the silver ore will break and get spit out the back. Or no, it doesn't. Hmm, I don't know what's happening to the silver ore. Hmm, it didn't spit out the silver ore. So maybe you can't use this for for mining ores. I spit out the Mimikite. Am I going crazy? I don't see the silver ore, though. What an eggs down here? Oh, there it is, silver ore. Okay, never mind. It was just some weird thing. It wasn't spitting out right away. It was, like, um, delayed. Like, I, it was like it spits out the ore that it mines on the next operation, is what it seems like. It seems like when it, after it breaks this stone block, it doesn't like it gives me the stuff that it broke previously. That's what it that's what it seems like at the moment. But it, but this is the tunnel bore. It'll 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 dig forward. I wouldn't stand in front of these uh, mining pipes. I don't know if they'll kill you or not, but I wouldn't stand in front of them. And, um, but what you can see is that the the tunnel bore, because it puts up this frame and puts up this pipe, you won't be able to walk down the tunnel it's digging while it's digging. You will have to wait for it for it to finish. Of course, you you can decide whenever it's done to just you know turn the thing off. So I mean, you could power this like I said with a performance engine. You could power it with a bunch of gas engines. You could power it with a hydrokinetic uh, engine. But um, it's not a very fast uh, mining device. It's pretty slow. But it's pretty cheap, so what do you expect, right? It's the it, it, it's not very expensive. The power requirements aren't huge, so it's not going to be especially fast. It's not going to be especially um, convenient. But you can set this and forget it uh, if you're running it on an infinite power source. Like if you've got a, a fuel production that outpaces the needs of your gas engines, or if you've got a hydrokinetic engine, you don't have to worry about the power running out. So you can just set one of these to work and pipe the uh, materials back. So right now it's spitting everything out the side. Um, let me see if I can stick, if I stick a chest on this. Let's see if it, if it auto interfaces with this, uh, with this chest. So the next operation will come in any second now, hopefully. Come on, mining tunnel, tunnel bore, <laughs> boring machine. Whatever you're called. There we go. And as you can see, the items went into the chest. So if you put a chest next to this, the items will go into the chest. Um, I haven't tried putting uh, item pipes on it, but that might work as well. But, you know, chest works, so why not do that? You can pipe items out of the chest with a pipe or whatever. So that, actually, that, this is the boring machine. Um, it's, it's really this simple. Place it down, give it some power, uh, select the um, shape of your tunnel. It'll prevent uh, gravel and sand from falling into your tunnel. Um, I don't know what happens when this encounters uh, liquids. So let's actually see if we can't test what happens if it encounters some water. 
I will just uh, dig alongside it, get in front of it, and drop a water uh, bucket. So let's place some water here just to see what the mining, uh, the tunnel board, mis boring machine. I want to call it a tunnel board because of railcraft. I've never actually used that one either, but for some reason, I mean, it's digging a tunnel, so I want to call it a tunnel board, but it's not. It's a boring machine. Let me grab a torch so we can see. This is ex live experimentation. Right, so obviously the mining pipes stop the water from spreading, but let's see what happens when the mining pipes try and uh, go through the water. Will they go through the water? Will they destroy the water? Will they not move any further? Okay, um, they moved. And it looks like it just destroyed the water. So that looks like it looks like the, the tunnel boring machine has no problem going through water. What about lava? Okay, so obviously you're gonna want to know this because if you put it down low in the earth, you're probably gonna run into pockets of lava. Does the boring machine destroy them? It obviously destroys water, so you don't have to worry about that. Yep, it destroys the lava as well, and it doesn't try and output it into the chest. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the boring machine is not bothered by liquids. Will oh, can only dig horizontally. You cannot turn this up or down. It can only be dug, dig horizontally. There are other mining machines that can dig down or up, but they do cost. Uh, they, they are a bit more costly. Um, we'll talk about those. Uh, Actually, why not? I'll talk about those in the next episodes. So, next couple of episodes, we'll just go through all of the um, mining machines uh, to get those uh, done and out of the way. So, yeah, um, this was the, the boring machine. Um, I hope this has answered your questions. The boring machine's power requirements are a bit vague, but give it 512 newton meters of torque. Uh, give it enough speed to get going to the speed you want, and you won't really have to worry about it being unable to dig through anything too hard. Um, I haven't. I assume obsidian is the hardest, but it'll dig through pretty much everything, um, not obstructed by liquids at all. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, when you're done with your tunnel bore, and you've broken the block and you picked it back up uh, and collected all your items, you may to get rid of the mining pipe, just punch it. From what I can gather, um, let me go into creative mode. I mean, uh, survival mode, just to see if it's that easy. Yep, you can just punch it. So punch the mining pipe and it will destroy itself quite a ways. You're gonna have to go through the tunnel and keep punching it, but um, yeah, you'll you'll be able to get rid of the mining pipe that easily. So that's the tunnel bore, um, tunnel a boring machine. You're left with a nice tunnel of whatever shape you choose. Uh, yeah. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, next video we'll talk about another mining machine. So I'm Sentinel H and I'm signing out.